I started plucking it, I was like, ah, oh, now I see where the HD is at. mom so let's get right into this chit chat talk first let me just talk about my hair real quick my hair is by units it's their five by five hd tell me why i was sitting here um and i this wig i wasn't feeling it. i was like why am i not feeling this wig from the way that i got last time usually i don't pluck my wigs because i usually get them pre-plucked or kind of in a way plucked so that way i can wear them for a long time and the frontal won't mess up and then overall it just won't my wig won't be balding as quick so i didn't pluck this wig but when i started plucking it i was like ah oh, now i see where the hd is at so pluck your wigs just a little thing um also this is 20 inch but i usually just cut my hair so it's like no it's like 22 so it's like probably like now 20 i don't know 21 i don't know and then my wine uh, today we got some cheap wine by barefoot from target i got it from target i think it's called barefoot but it's they're just regular red wine nothing much i'm probably not gonna drink all of this let, look at this look at this my fiance likes to pour the whole glass of wine. That's not like wine. I know usually you're supposed to sip on it, pour it a little bit at a time. He gives me a whole two cups. Like, damn. You know? So, I'm probably not going to drink all this. So, but we'll just drink it for now. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be just doing my hair for today of today's talk. You can do whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna go and hot comb my hair and I just got done washing it so this is what the hair looks out of just washing it and it looks pretty damn good if I say so myself okay the only thing about the hair is I'm a jet black type of girl I love dark hair and this hair is like really light compared to even to my natural hair I dye my natural hair jet black so I'm like Ugh. at first it was a little hard to like come through i think that's one of the reasons why i didn't like it either is like the wig was so light but now i'm feeling it now i'm like oh my she's rocking the one b you know so i'm gonna just comb out these curls or these waves that it Okay, so it is combed out. This is what it looks like. It is thick. I got it at a 180, so it is pretty thick, if I would say so myself. But I'm just going to go ahead now and just comb everything out and get it kind of like soap press. For some reason, I feel like hot combing your wigs would make a difference, but they don't make a difference. So I'm like, I just do it just because. Okay, so let's start with our first topic. I'm really quick, I'm going in with the edge booster, a comb, and a hot comb to just get it real good. <laughs> so, let's talk about our first topic. Are you failing as a mom? Are you, Are failing? you failing? Do you feel Do like you feel you're like failing? You're... I don't know. I definitely felt like I was failing as a mom when I started having my baby. Especially if you have a C-section it wasn't even that I had the baby blues. I just, because obviously he was around me. So I was able to hold him somewhat, somewhat able to hold him. Mostly my fiance was doing most of the work when it came to that. That I was like really upset by because I just couldn't hold James like I should. If you hear James, he's in the bath with his dad. So, yeah. Then after kind of Josh went to work and I kind of st started stepping in as just being like I feel like the primary provider for my newborn baby. It wasn't like I was feeling like like I wasn't getting any time with him. It was more for like I was exhausted. Like I was so tired of doing things. I was so tired. Some days I just didn't want to wake up. I ended up having postpartum depression. So my my stories might be a little different from yours but i had postpartum depression and i promise you guys like there's been times where i'm like 
we eating Chick-fil-A for breakfast for the next week. Like, that's how bad it was. But I can't, I, I kept reminding myself, like, you know, it's not good to stay in that kind of rut. But failing as a mom can really get you because you can just do, you can forget to do, like, the simplest things. And it makes you feel like, like, if you're not a good mother. The constant thought in your head, oh my god, guys. Like, I would get these thoughts out of nowhere. I talked about it in my latest video i'll link it down below if you haven't went to go see it go check it out it's five tips on how to help you with postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety so i'll link it down below if you guys want to go check it out but yeah i was constantly feeling like that i felt no but you're there like it's a mom talk not a Mom. Right, well, go ahead and talk. No, hurry up. Okay, guys, so editing April is here. I'm so sorry, guys. Since the last take when my fiance interrupted our little girl's talk, I guess I didn't press record on my camera, so it's a little wonky. So the next part I'm talking about is the pros and cons of being a mother. And right now I'm talking about having friends and just having no friends being a mother. So this is the next clip you're going to see. I'm so sorry. I promise I will do better. But thank you guys for still watching. Okay, so sorry my camera cut off. But I think that's something that we got to realize as we go older that we're going to change. The people around us are going to change. I don't expect to have the same friends that I had in high school, but I expect to at least to have some. And don't get me wrong, I'm not like, I don't have no friends. This is, okay, this is my husband always tells me like, go hang out with your friends, go hang out with your friends. But the friends that are still my friends, I wouldn't want to hang out with them all the time because of the things that they're doing. Not saying they're doing bad things, but the way I'm trying to go in my life and the people that I want around my family, my son, is not something that I would just be like, you know, like, you know how we got that crazy auntie, but we, we, she's our aunt, but I don't need to have that crazy friend in my life, you know, I don't want to be that type of woman no more, mentally, I want to grow mature, I want to see my son, I want my son to see me flourish, and it sucks having no friends because it's not even just that, like, you don't want to be around people. It's just, like, I have a baby. Like, you don't have a baby. I have a baby, you know? So, sometimes you end up having no friends. <laughs> no friends, okay? My next con that I was talking, just like I was talking about, is just always focusing on the baby. And I think I've already been all of this, but that's a con. Also, not having fun. I feel like mm, some relationships are different. Some relationships don't neglect the fun in the relationship. But when I first had James and just our new baby, there was no fun. <laughs> I'm I'm not being serious. Like we were stressed maybe eighty percent of the time, and that could be a really bad thing, especially in a relationship. And me and Joshua have been together for six years, but still. This was some hurdle that we had to get over just so we can make sure our relationship works. And I just want to say something about our relationships. Do not have a baby. If you think it's going to help your relationship, that is so far from the truth. It is the farthest thing from the truth, you know. And actually, I feel like it will hurt you, not just you, but it will also hurt your baby. So, don't do it. Also, I feel like I rarely go out. I hardly dress up. If I do dress up, it's like a girl's night or me and my hubby are going out. I try to dress up more, but I'm still working on like losing weight. So I don't want to go buy clothes and then I'm losing weight. It doesn't make no sense. So, but I try to feel good and look good. And that's what I preach on here is to just take care of yourself. So I'm actually really happy that I started this channel because this is something that I'm really now just like, not that I'm now doing it, but I'm doing it more often and it's just really making me happy. So I want to thank you guys who are subscribed to my channel. Really thank you guys. So you guys, I hopefully I'm making you guys happy, but you guys are really making me happy. So yeah. And then, but mostly the time, like, because I know, like, I have a, I have a two-year-old 
and he likes to spill things he's very clumsy like his mom i like this shirt five dollars five dollars target that's it that's all hold on my son's calling me Okay, baby. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 oh. Where your legs? Ha ha. Okay. I love you. Okay. So I feel like I flat iron it as good as it can get. So I'm gonna try to wand curl my hair. It's really late at night, but I really want to wand curl it. So let's try and do these. Okay, so let's talk about the pros of being a mom. There's a lot of good pros of being a mom, you know? Even though you may not have no friends. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. You will have friends. There's some people that are like friends and they get pregnant together. I would love that so much, but I don't have a friend that would want to get pregnant, especially at my age. So let's talk about the pros family i think that is just so simple but it's like the best thing there's no other thing that i would want more than to have my son in my life my fiance in my life like my family and i feel like after i had a baby i feel like my family got closer maybe i feel like we got closer a lot more and i'm forever grateful for that I love being family. I love going on family trips, family vacations. I love just hanging out. Like, even if we're just going to the park or just at home all snuggled together. I love it. I love my little bungalow. Not only that, I feel like as a mother, especially now, I'm, like, really striving to be my best. Not just because of for myself, but because I feel like I have a child watching me and I think that is so important my mom when she was my age she was working nine to five two three jobs just to get by and I think the the thing that she didn't forget and as moms we tend to do that even parents we tend to put ourselves on the back burner and we forget about our dreams and our life goals and I think it would have been so much of a better environment if I would have seen my mom grow up uh, being what she would want to be because that would have put her in a more happier financial state and environment and i think for me now looking at how i was raised i love my mom to death i wouldn't change anything about my mom but now i see like the mistakes i'm somebody if you tell me don't go that way i'm not gonna go that way and that's just how i am especially if it's a multitude of people telling me like don't do it and then i don't do it like i'm just not gonna risk it Somebody else can risk the biscuit and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, I'm still not going to go. So, I think that's one thing that I do now is I try to be myself. Jade, I'm going to need you to stop busting in this dope. So, I like to take like a, probably like this kind of size when it comes to wand curling my hair. So I'm gonna go and wand curl this piece and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it real quick once I close the door. So I usually like to grab my wand curl down and I like to make like a twisty type of motion. Like I'm twisting my wand, my hair. I teach my niece how to wand curl her hair for my mom's 60th birthday. It was so nice. We threw a 60th surprise birthday party for my mother. It was so much fun. But yeah, so I think that's just something that I do often now is like I'm really trying to be my best and I know I still have a long ways to go in life because I'm so young and I'm really glad that I still have time to do things and really put things into perspective. But I think that's something that I'm really trying to do, especially 2020 has really opened my eyes to certain things and certain ways I like to live my life. You see the curl. I don't like them too small. I kind of like them big so they turn into like these pretty beachy waves. So that's how I do it. And I just use got to be glue spray. Is it gonna go? 
show you guys the one that I use. This one, just to spray it. So, and you can put heat protectant, but I don't know where mine's at, so I'm not gonna do that right now. So my next pro, I feel like, is I think after I went through postpartum depression, not just that, just being a mother, I gained such an amazing support system. Not just my friends, but not just my family, I mean, but I had like friends that I haven't seen in a while just want to reach out to me and make sure that I'm okay, my baby's okay. And I think that's so amazing about being a mom. Some people, mind you, some people don't have that, especially some single mothers. They don't have that partner support system, which I'm so grateful to have, Joshua. But I feel like even if it's just your mom, you know, or somebody, a best friend or a co-worker, like, that is just amazing. i grown such an amazing support system. James was lucky enough to have two baby showers. I had a family and friend one, and then I had one at work. And I promise you guys, I haven't bought diapers ever since he turned two years old. So I was, like, truly blessed, especially because... I was turning, I was becoming a stay at home mom from working a nine to five job and I was just like, <sighs> I was just really scared about certain things and just having those people be there for me really helped me, especially, also I am a baby. I am the youngest out of 10 kids. So <laughs> I'm like the princess in the family. So of course, you know, I might be a little bit more spoiled. Just a little bit. I'm <laughs> just kidding a lot of it. But yeah, so that's one thing. I also want to say, I think when it comes to being a mother, a pro that I feel like, again, like I said, I just want to be better mentally and I want to mature like so much. Like I'm reading over here, reading self-help books. Like who the hell? At 23, you know, I'm over here trying to start my dream life. I want to be like a full-time YouTuber. Like I really want to do things that will just better myself, better my son's self. I want to create, I want to help with breaking generational curse. I want to be able to create generational wealth. Like I want to do those things in my life. And I see it so much now of I'm able to do it, which is weird that I have a baby. I'm able to say like, because I have a baby, I feel like it's, I'm more able to do it because I have a baby. I don't know why. Do you know you guys feel like that? I don't know why. <laughs> Drink some more wine. Also, another pro that I feel like, something that I always preach on this channel is self-care and I feel like, Becoming a mother made me realize how important it is to take care of myself mentally, physically, and spiritually. Like, those things really matter, especially if you're a mother, because we hardly get time for ourselves. And a lot of people have this thing about working moms and stay-at-home moms. Like, I worked when I was pregnant. I wasn't, obviously. I did work when, like, kind of in between when I had games. For like maybe three months and then i became a, and then i went to stay at home again and now i'm stay at full-time stay at home mom but i worked and i worked when i was up to like i was like three to eight weeks pregnant so i felt like i got both of the spectrum and i understand where some mothers are coming from where they feel like stay-at-home mothers don't do anything it's not really the physical part it's more the mental part like the touching, um, the constant crying, the constant doubting, the constant anxiety, the constant being alone. And honestly, truthfully, when I started working, I told my husband this, like I just felt so good just to have a little bit of like even four hours of just space to myself. You know, but I feel like where I'm at right now, being a stay-at-home mother is just better for me only because I have dreams and aspects and I can do that just by being a stay home mother and I'm really love, grateful for that because you know I have somebody that is allowing me to do that but at the same time like I don't know it's just so hard like do I want to work or do I want to be a stay home mom like working working moms too like you're constantly physically tired emotionally drained and when you get home you have to take care of a son or a daughter like I understand how it is but she my mom was a single mother so she was always like upset at us and we we're kind of like ooh, you know 
but that's why I encourage mothers and just anybody that's trying to start something or do something in their life do it do what can make you really happy in your life especially because now we only got one life and COVID really showed that to us you know what I'm saying because 2020 was such a bad year but I feel like at the same time I'm really grateful that I'm able to stay at home so yeah let's move on on um toddler attachment not even that if your kid's not a toddler maybe he's 13 14 15 16 17 18 uh if they 18 and they attach i don't know what's going on there but um let's talk about attachment i think it's like something in the moon something in the sky not just me but a lot of like people that I know their baby has been getting really attached to them I don't know what it is my son was always somebody who's attached because his daddy his daddy is very like cuddler but James is like OD like he he will go OD to the max like he loves to hold my hand like both of my hands like I need one to eat you know the constant crying, the grabbing, like when I'm sleeping and let's say I'm trying to lay down, at least get like, just lay down. I'm not closing my eyes, I'm trying to lay down. He is jumping on my back. So right now I'm trying to set boundaries. If any of you moms are going through that, let me know how it's going. Um, and let me know what your kid is doing. Like, how are they attached? Like, what are they doing to you? Are they not letting you shit? Like, what is going on? Something is in the water, the milk, like, I don't know what it is, but it has gone too far. And it's kind of pissing me off because I can't literally, like, I can be cooking and he would want me to hold him. Which I understand there's days where, like, kids are not feeling good or they're just not feeling themselves. They want their mommy. But this has been, like, a constant thing. And I'm like, James, like, what is, <laughs> what is going on? Like, I'm trying to... I don't know. Maybe he feels like I'm not showing him that much love. So, I'm also trying to tell him, like, you know, like, so you so right now I'm in my room and he keeps coming back and forth. I'm just, I do close my door because I want him to know, like, you know, this is my space. You know, you have to learn how to respect people's boundaries and respect people's space. I know he's so young, so he won't understand it. But I want to build that so that way when he gets older, it won't be like, what? Like, you know, like, what, what, what? You know, he will already know, like, you know. But, yeah, because these toddlers are getting out of control, you know. And I always tell him no. If anything is making me, like, uncomfortable, because the one thing I don't want my son to do is make somebody feel, like, uncomfortable. And I know there's going to be days, you know, where I'm going to get called to the principal's office. Maybe, Maybe hopefully not. But I want him to respect people's space. And at the end of the day, I do have, I do have a African-American, handsome son. And there's a lot that falls with that. Um, even though I see no wrong right now in his eyes, but I have to start teaching him so when he grows older, he'll know and he'll respect people. So, that's that. So, I got this half of my hair done. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good if I say so myself. So, I'm going to do this half. Hopefully this half doesn't take that long because I don't really have that much hair on the side. And then look at all this. <laughs> okay, let's talk about another topic. So I wanted to talk about something and I want your guys' guidance and opinion because me and my partner, we're still going through it. Not to say like we're fighting or something constantly, but it's something that we're trying to learn and adjust our lives. Okay, so. This next topic, I wanted to talk about the disconnect with your partner because you're having a baby. Um, so my first thing is no sex. Not that we're, I'm not saying we're not having sex. We are having sex. We're not, we're not having as we used to, but we're 
getting there I feel like we're trying to I'm trying to figure out him and he's trying to figure out me and that's another thing as you grow as a person you're constantly changing your partner's constantly changing I can't expect him to be the same person he was like when I first met him like no he's not the same person and he can't expect me but it's kind of hard to see somebody change because maybe you liked a certain way that they were acting that's what attracted you to them and now that they're changing or they're becoming a different person um it kind of is like uh -huh, no kg I'm just kidding but <laughs> I wouldn't say we're, so when I first had my son though we weren't having no sex like I'm being blatantly honest, like, we weren't having this up. We would have it, like, maybe once a month. Like, I'm really being serious, especially when I was going through it. You, please do not touch me. I did not want to be touched. And I'm somebody who doesn't like to be touched in the first place. I'm somebody, like, you know your love language. I like when people do acts of servants, like, take out the trash. Like, ooh, if you take out the trash for me, oh, my God. I drop it like it's hot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but... I like somebody who would do acts of servants. My husband, I would say, is somebody who loves affection. Like, he loves when I'm just sitting there next to him while he's playing video games. Like, that's the kind of man you, like, I want? Like, just kidding. But that's how he is. He likes affection. I don't like affection. Like, I will show it to you, but I won't. Like, obviously, I will show it to you, but I'm not somebody, like, I don't like, I don't even like to, like, tongue kiss. I don't like the tongues. Am I the only one? I just don't like PDA. I really don't like PDA. I was that girl like, get around. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I really don't like all that kissy, kissy, kissy stuff. So no sex. And then it was really hard for us to communicate also. Like our communication was, oh, that didn't hurt out good. Let's recurl this one. Our communication or things were off the roof and it wasn't because we didn't want to talk I felt like especially in the new stage we didn't have time to talk like we we're constantly up the baby's ass like we were constantly worrying about the baby like that's how it was and that's how sometimes if you don't get over that barrier that's how sometimes it can be and that's what kind of I feel like a lot of parents like divorce and stuff like that because they're not talking no more and we really had to sit back and be like Okay, what's wrong? Because you're tripping, I'm tripping, the baby's tripping, like we all three can't be tripping. So I learned how to communicate. One thing that I really love is I love to go outside. I love to be outside. I'm just kidding now. I love to be like outdoors. I love to do things. I love to shop. Not just shop, even if I like we do like a little picnic. I love that. Like I love those kind of things. So I think when I wasn't getting that, like when I was stuck in the house all the time, just being bored and not really doing anything, that was really taking a toll on me mentally. And I think that's one of the ways why I fell into depression because I was constantly at home. Like having your vitamin C and your vitamin D is very important after you have a baby. But that was something that we weren't doing. We weren't going on dates. And I don't know, he would come home from work and we would just talk about the baby and what the baby was doing and that's it. Like, it's like we, the same routine over and over again. And I was just like, so annoyed by it. And until I got to like a breaking point where I'm just like, I can't do this no more. Like, I can't do this no more. We didn't break up or anything, but we just really had a very long talk about, is this something we want to keep going through? So maybe that's something that you can, your partner can talk about if you guys are going through something like that. So I just want to talk about maybe some ways that will help you if you are and you and your partner are going through that. First thing is communicate. Always communicate. Talk about the things that you feel. I know sometimes it can be really weird, but if you're in a relationship with somebody and you have a baby, like why aren't you communicating? Like that's the first thing you guys need to do when it's communicate because you guys are both the parents and communication is very important, not just for you, but for the baby as well. And then my second tip is I'm somebody obviously who believes in God. So I think prayer is something that helps and sets you in a relationship. 
it wants to be you, you, and God. Like, God needs to be in between your guys' relationship for it to work and for it to prosper and just be better, you know? A lot of times it's just hurdles, but sometimes we need help going through those hurdles. And I feel God really helps me, even if it's just you doing the prayer. Just pray for your partner. Constantly do that. Pray for your well-being. Pay for your guys' relationship, your marriage, whatever it is that is taking a toll on you because that's what the enemy wants the enemy wants to discourage you guys and make you guys feel like you can't do it and then it's your trip is not worthy enough why am i speaking way to communicate maybe like people communicate different i feel like sometimes like we're just like us girls we're such in our ego we know when things aren't good and we're just like i'm just not gonna talk to him or i'm just gonna leave it alone and sometimes that can actually do more hurt than good and i feel like if you find a way to communicate the proper way that's why communication and relationship is so important if you don't got that down your relationship is gonna go down like that's just how it is like communication is so important and talk about your feelings like when you're upset don't just go you can I, what i say to myself is april and even josh knows this i don't like to communicate right off the back when we're arguing that's just something i am i'm an introvert i like to just sit and swallow my pride but i realized that i can't do that no more so what i like to do is he likes to give me like like i said i like just even like five minutes 30 minutes to just cool off go for a walk i don't know what it is and then i'll talk about it because if i talk about it when i'm in the heat of the moment i start lashing out i don't want to say things i don't mean you know and that does more hurt than good so for me i feel like communication uh is important but it's how you communicate to your partner as well so also like when you get upset i feel like talking about it don't just be upset and then run in your room you know if you're hungry if you're hangry then say that say that okay <laughs> but sometimes also too guys i can also feel like sometimes it's just that you're tired Ask somebody to watch your child. Don't feel like that person that has like that barrier over. I used to be that person that feels like, well, I want to ask somebody, but like I don't like asking people for favors or anything. But sometimes that's why the people say it, creates, it takes a village to raise a kid because it really does. Like you need the help. You're like people know how hard it is. Other moms know how hard it is. Go and ask a friend. Maybe the friend can come over for like three hours and help you watch little Timmy while he's why you take like an hour or two hour nap you know sleep deprived is a real thing y'all i have got it like really take care of yourself and i also think i'm grabbing some um smoothing hair oil this is by hask it's your curtain oil but i also think sometimes it can just be your thoughts like i said again so finding ways to overcome them. Maybe you're just giving yourself affirmations, prayer, like I said, and rebuking the enemy and what he's trying to put in your head and your thoughts, guys. Because that's what I feel like at the end of the day, if you really sit down and really look at yourself, you're such a wonderful mother and a wonderful person. It's just the enemy telling you this or that. And always get help. Get help from family members. Tell your husband, like, hey, babe, I really don't feel like you're helping me today. I really need you to step it up tell him that you know i never knew a partner that didn't want to do that at all like didn't want to help you especially if they see you stressing and angry all the time because nobody wants a bitter becky okay okay so i have a little quote it says wearing is like the down payment you may never have <laughs> really said on that think about it i got it from instagram i will i don't know if who wrote it but that one really resonated with me because sometimes our worries are like not even they sh there are something that we shouldn't even be worrying about really honestly so and prove to your brain that you're capable prove to your brain that you're capable prove to your brain you're capable like i said it's just a mental thing when we start proving to ourselves that we are capable that we can overcome these hurdles that we can do the things that we say we can't honestly when we start doing them and we put action to them it's like girl your brain's like girl I never seen you do this before and you're like because i never showed you you know what i'm saying so prove to yourself you're capable so i am finally done with my hair guys this is like the little wand curl that i'm gonna wear 
Let me see if I can hot comb this back. This. It's like way too close in my face. Okay guys, so this is my little wand curls. I like them and as I fluff them and sleep on them, they'll look more prettier throughout tomorrow because I'm going to bed after this. But look, I should told you guys I've been drinking all this wine. This is way too much. Way too much wine. <laughs> so, I really want to thank you guys so much for sitting here and joining me with this wine down with me. The mommy wine down with me. I really hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know down in the comment section if you have any tips or any tricks, any questions, anything for anything leave them down in the comment section also don't forget to follow me on my social medias make sure you guys subscribe to my channel so you guys can see more of me and more of self care tip for mothers that are going through postpartum depression and just mommies in general and give this video a huge thumbs up and i'll see you guys in my next video bye